Well, hello there, friends. A special dish, one of my favorites, shepherd's pie. We made two servings. We made an individual serving, and we made this beautiful lasagna pan. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to make it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell. Let's get cooking. Well, let me show you how easy it is to make this recipe, friends. I have some beautiful short ribs. I'm going to cut them up. I'm going to cut them up in little pieces, and I'm going to grind them myself. I like them much better than buying meat already ground. So all I got to do is just turn my guy on, and voila. This is it, my friend. I'm going to do all this. I'll be back when it's all grind up, and we're going to start the recipe. So I'll be back in a few minutes after I'm done, because we don't want to hear that machine for the next few minutes. I'll see you in a minute. All right, friends. Now that everything is ready, let's get going. I love making this. I grew up on it. My mom used to make it. In French, we call it hachis parmentier. So, uh, <laughs> and I don't know where the shepherd's pies come from, and I'm not going to worry about telling you, because I don't know. Hey, <laughs> You're, you go online and you read, and it's like 17 different uh, opinions of where it comes from. So uh, we don't care. <laughs> we just want to eat some good mashed potato and ground uh, beef or ground pork or ground lamb. However you want to make it, it's good with me. As long as you're happy, I'm happy. Hey, guys, I got clarified butter. You don't have to use clarified butter. You can use a good cooking oil. But clarified butter, I don't have to worry about burning it, and I love the flavor of butter. So uh, if you don't know how to make clarified butter, friends, there's a link down there in the video. It says, show more. Click on it, and we'll have a link about how to make clarified butter, okay? And this butter, then the milk protein has been removed. Like I said, I got two, two and a quarter pound of short ribs. You can do ground beef. You can do ground lamb. You can do whatever you want. Uh, the short rib are perfect. They got the perfect amount of fat. We're going to saute them here and get some malar reaction. Okay, you can do everything in one pot. I like to do it in two pots so it goes faster. We got some diced onion. We got some sliced portobello mushroom. We got some diced carrots. And, um, and, and then we got some tomatoes. I got a can of 28 ounce tomato. I use La Valle tomato, crunched tomatoes. I got about a quarter cup of uh, tomato puree. I got some thyme, I got some rosemary, and I got some garlic, and I got some peas. For those of you that don't like peas, just don't put them in. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm not going to be there. <laughs> You're going to be just fine. Let's check to make sure we have a good 365 degrees. We don't, so you know what we're going to do? We're going to wait for a second until we get there, because uh, I don't want to bore you to death with too many stories. I got a little bit of beef stock here just in case we need it. So we're gonna wait a few seconds for the heat to be hotter because it's not hot enough. So I wait. You gotta make sure you're hot. <laughs> you gotta make sure you're hot for it. If it's not hot enough of a temperature, it's not gonna work. So we're gonna caramelize the onion right here. You know the onion always number one, eh? Oh. <laughs> My regular, here he goes again. No, 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 I'm just gonna say it one time, that's it. Always, <laughs> always number one in the onion. And, um, and then the beef. The beef, the pork, the lamb, whatever it is you're using, you gotta make sure your pan is hot. Otherwise, you're not gonna create the mala maya reaction. Maya. Maya. Maya reaction. What is maya reaction? It's a caramelization of protein, my dear folks. We're gonna get some extra flavor. We wanna get a golden brown, okay? I see too many recipes, friends. When people do this, even when you do a bolognese sauce, you want to get some caramelization. That's flavor. It's called Maya reaction. We're going to use a garlic salt. I got an amazing garlic salt. This garlic salt is fantastic. We're going to put it everywhere. Because we need a garlic salt, we're going to put some coarse black pepper. Coarse black pepper. And, and let's put it here too, the coarse black pepper. Right? And we're going to caramelize the onion. So yeah, I see too many people that do this recipe, and, and what happened is their meat is stewed, stewed. The meat is kind of like you took a New York strip, and, and you're cooking in boiling water. Yeah, yeah, it'll cook. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? So we want to get some color caramelization, so we're going to get this, okay? And then the onion, same thing. So this is going to take a few minutes before it happens. 
So I'm not going to bore you to death. We're going to continue doing this. When this is golden brown, and this guy going to brown, we'll come back and we'll put the whole thing together. We're going to wait because we cannot rush this. If we rush it, we're not going to have any guys call it, a nice color. When you make a bolognese sauce, you got to do the same thing. All right, so we'll be back in a few minutes. Golden caramel and uh, and grand brown meat. All right, friends. It's taking a little long, long time for the uh, for the meat to caramelize, but it's okay. We got a little time. The onion I've caramelized. I'm now going to put the mushroom because I want the mushroom to release their water. So we're going to do that. We'll put the mushroom in there. We're going to put a little salt, and we're going to wait for that to happen. So it's kind of like a uh, take your time kind of dish to make. We want to make sure everything is cooked. We want to make sure that mushrooms are cooked. It takes a little while to cook. We want to make sure everything is done correctly. The meat has not caramelized yet. And I want to wait until it caramelizes before I put more ingredient in there. I don't want to put more moisture. If I put more moisture, then I'll do like everybody else does. I'll stew the meat instead of getting that Maya reaction which is so important. Remember, it's very important. So we're going to wait a few more minutes for this, okay? And then we'll continue adding more ingredients, all right? So we'll come back in a minute. Okay, friends. Check out the meat. You see, we got some nice color in it. And uh, the flavor of it is amazing. You see, we got some nice color. Not big caramelization, but good enough <clears throat> for us to continue cooking the recipe. The mushrooms have released all of their water. We are now going to put the carrots in here and continue cooking this until the carrots are tender. Until the carrots are tender. And right here, my friends, we're going to add the tomatoes. We're going to add our tomatoes right here. We're going to add a tomato puree in here. And we're going to cook all this down. We're going to put some uh, rosemary and thyme. Cook all this up. Let's check this. It's a constant. I mean to mix everything, friends. We want to const constantly mix everything. So you got to be there and doing it. You got to really mix it. This is like a, a really important thing to do now is to mix everything. We're gonna let this cook slowly. I'm gonna put a little bit of flour, just a little bit of flour and a little bit of stock, friends. So I'll show you. Gonna put just a little bit of stock. This is my beef stock. If you don't have beef stock, you can use beef broth. Uh, I'm gonna put a little flour. So I got a little bit of, uh, I'll have a little nest right there. We're gonna put it really quick. Just gently a little bit of flour on the oh mamma mia, mamma mia. Put everything on the side. There we go. Just a little bit of flour. We're gonna mix all this up. Let the flour cook. This gotta be uh, this is gonna dry up a little bit, you see. What a mess I made. Don't do like me. And we're gonna cook this up, friends. And this is going to take a few minutes to cook. So the carrots and the mashed potatoes, we already made some mashed potatoes. And I already made the mashed potato, friends. I'm going to let this cook. I'm going to put just a little bit more flour, very little. This time I'll keep it, I'll keep it in the, on the, uh... there you go. That's what I was trying to do the first time. There you go, friends. And we're going to gently cook this. We're also going to gently cook this until the carrots are tender. And when the carrots are tender, let me tell you, with the short ribs, this is going to be amazing, my friends. See, it's beautiful. We want to lose all moisture. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to cook that slowly. We'll be back in a few minutes. 
And then, you know, we're going to add the peas right here. And the peas, I use frozen peas. Makes it easy. Frozen peas. And we're going to cook all this up. And we're going to blend all this together. For a little more garlic salt. Because at this point, I put so many ingredients. Eh? There you go. So we cook this gently. Until the cows are tender. And then we're going to mix all this. And we're going to pour it all together. So we'll be back when this is drier. And the cows are tender. Be back in a few minutes. Friends, I forgot to put the garlic. <laughs> you know, I had to forget something. It was right there. <laughs> okay, we're going to continue cooking. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, friends. The meat has reduced. It's very big, so it's, uh, I'm putting it in two pans, friends. <laughs> uh, a third pan. Ah, mamma mia. I'll tell you, I dirty a little more pan than we like sometimes. Mix the whole thing up. It would have been difficult <laughs> to do it all in one pan, especially the quantity that I got. I got a lot big, I got a lot of stuff in here, friends. Maybe a little, but uh, you know, I always like to cook for the neighbors, okay? Because a uh, chip of spy is something that the neighbors are gonna love. Look at this, friends. Check this out. Does that look good or what? Oh yeah. <laughs> this look amazing. It's look gorgeous, my friends. So now, you see what a lot of people do? They do, um, they put this and they put the mashed potato on top and then they put the cheese on it and, uh, and it's beautiful. But I like to do it where I put a mashed potato first, then I put the meat and then I put more mashed potatoes. <laughs> you see, I think you're gonna like it. I think you're gonna like it. I think you'll come back for more. Okay, mashed potato first. Let me tell you what I do. I like to keep my mashed potato warm, okay? So you know what I do? I put it in a bowl like that, and I put a plastic wrap on it, and then, believe it or not, I keep it in a warm oven, 250. I got an extra oven, 250. So I put it in there, and it's warm. I mean, it's not super, super hot. See, I can't handle it with my hand. And, uh, and what we're going to do, we're just going to put it in here like this. Now... This is the bottom row, right? So the bottom row, I'm not too concerned about it because I'm going to make it nice no matter what. This is a Yukon Gold mashed potatoes that I made. I made a video on it, okay? So you have a video on this, friends. So this is going to be a crust, you see? This is going to be the crust that we're going to do. And you got a video on that. It's just beautiful Yukon Gold mashed potatoes with butter. And if, if, it, if, they, if they're too... Uh, to thick, you can add a little bit of milk. I, I'd rather put tons of butter. <laughs> so <laughs> it's up to you, my friends, but I think you should um, put a little more butter, okay? A lot, a lot of butter. Look at how creamy that is. Look at those mashed potatoes. They are beautiful, right? So this is going to be a crust. So we're going to take it out of here. We're going to make sure it's nice and flat, okay? We're not going to be too concerned about it because... We don't need to be too concerned about it. You know what I mean? It's, you're not gonna see it, right? We just wanna make sure it's evenly flat. This is a beautiful lasagna pan that I love because you can put this on the table. I mean, you can use a regular lasagna pan. This is just kinda like cool. It's got a nice handle to it, right? So let's just do that now for, for now. Let's put it right here. I think I'm gonna need this in a minute, right? So now we're gonna take this, the, the meat part of it and we're gonna put it on top here, okay? All right. Now we don't wanna disturb the bottom row too much. Oh, mamma mia, mamma mia, I forgot to put the cheese. Oh, sacrilege, friends, sacrilege, sacrilege, sacrilege. 911. 911. Oh, hold on, one more, one more minute. 911. You cannot forget the cheese. Hey, don't tell anyone, okay? Hey, yeah, 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 we're not going to... I said, don't disturb the bottom row. That's what I said first, right? Hey, yeah, yeah. Mamma mia. I always got to forget something. <laughs> I tell you, friends. <laughs> Live show. I got some beautiful English cheddar. We're going to put a little extra on this part right there, right? Little uh, uh, English cheddar. Put whatever cheddar you want, friends. 
beautiful cheese. You can put push whatever cheese you want. Okay, that uh, the the French people put in Gruyere in there, and we're also gonna put a bit of Parmesan cheese on there. Look, you never know I made a I made a mistake. Shh, don't tell anybody. Okay, I'll deny it. <laughs> we're gonna continue. Here we go. Wow, I tell you what, to make a mistake. <laughs> I always make, I always screw up something. Uh, that's okay. We are Mount Friends. We are Mount Friends. You know, the other channel, they hide everything. <laughs> no, it's not true. Some of them are very nice. We love it. There's a lot of great channel out there. All right, so here we go, friends. We're going to continue. Maybe a little more. What do you think? I wouldn't want that corner right there. You got nothing. So <laughs> put everything in there. Oh, yeah, baby. It smells amazing, I'm telling you. Tell you, it really, really that. Use whatever meat you want. If you're gonna use meat also, good, use a good, a good ground shuck, good ground shuck, 80-20. Uh, try to do it yourself. If you have a meat grinder, it's better, but if you don't, don't worry about it. Not everybody got a meat grinder, right? Not everybody got a meat grinder. But I tell you what, though, you grind your meat one time, my friends. You grind your meat one time, You'll, uh, you'll, um, you'll never buy that crap they sell you at the store. I promise you that. There we go. All right, we're looking good. All right, now the mashed potato to go on the top. Mashed potato to go on the top. Um, you know, I wanted to show you also some, something else. If you want to make individual portion, you take one of those uh, metal rings. Metal rings, okay. Spread, take a little bit of the mashed potatoes, go on the bottom. Right? Put a little bit in the bottom, just a little bit. Make sure it goes right in the bottom. Mashed potatoes, right? Then take a spoon of sauce right there and put a little bit in there. That's an individual portion if you want to be fancy about this. Another reason, no reason not to be fancy, right? Right? We'll go back to that. So now on the top, it's this is kind of soft. If I had to put the mashed potato, I, I, I mess it all up. So what I do is I put it in a pastry bag. I got warm potatoes, and I keep it the same thing. I keep it in a, in a warm oven. It's not going to burn, right? And then I go right in there, and then I put it on there. And that, what that does, friends, that makes a cleaner job. You see? So then you don't mess up the, the bottom layer too much, you see? You don't mess up the meat too much like I did earlier. It's a pastry bag. It's a disposable pastry bag. It makes it a lot easier. It's more professional. <laughs> Some people are like, look at it. I'm not a professional. Don't worry. I'm not. We are here to have fun, my friends. See, just enough mashed potatoes to cover the whole top, right? So we good? Oh, don't forget this guy right there. The, uh, the single dude. Right? And then what we're going to do, don't go anywhere. We're going to go and flatten this just a little bit. Flatten it. And then we're going to take a fork and we're going to create some ridges so it's more going to make it nice and flat. And then we're going to take a fork and create some ridges to create some nice colors, okay, see, right there? That's it, just like this, friends. Perfect amount, maybe a little too much. There you go, thank you. Right there, we're in good shape. Come to Papa right there. Oh, mm, delicious. Take a paper towel, clean up the edges. Clean up the edges, boom, take a fork, create some design, nothing fancy here, you see? Hey, come back over here, you. Oh, we could do this, what do you think? <laughs> there were design right there, nothing fancy. See, told you it was not fancy, all right? All right, then we take a, Little more of our cheddar. And then we're gonna to top it with some Parmigiano Reggiano. 
And let me tell you this, my friends. This is the shepherd's pie. It's gorgeous. I put it a uh, Parmigiano Reggiano. Be generous. Don't be afraid now. Okay, same thing with this guy right there, the little guy. Right there. Those are cool if you want to make it a little fancy, you see? The cheese will be not too long. We're going to pop both of those in the oven. Right there, my friends, I got a cookie sheet. It's going on the cookie sheet. It's going in an oven at 375. I would say to get it really hot, maybe 30 minutes. We'll come back in 30 minutes. We want the internal temperature to be 145 degrees. All right, 145, 150. So we'll be back when it's the right temperature. Smells amazing, friends. Look how beautiful. We're gonna put a little chopped parsley in there, just a little bit, just to uh, finish it up. And, uh, and then I'm gonna let it rest a little bit, friends, because uh, it's too hot, and, um, and I don't wanna burn myself, because <laughs> I do that all the time. So we're gonna let it rest, then I'm gonna cut it, and we're gonna have a piece together, all right? So let it rest a few minutes. You remember, if after 45 minutes, it doesn't get you that golden brown color, you don't turn on the brawler, and don't forget it. <laughs> I would that happen to me once in a while. I uh, will be back in a few minutes, okay, when it's cooled off, so I don't want to burn myself. Okay, friends, we're going to cut a slice, because I'm hungry. <laughs> so the first slice never really looks so good. I hate to cut a first slice in front of you guys, but it is what it is. So we're going to go in and... Um, and we're gonna see if we can get a slice that looks pretty cool. Um, like I said, I don't expect the first slice to look really, really, really good. We're gonna try to scrape it and see what we can get, my friends. See what we can get at the first slice. You cut, 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 cut. All right, here we go, here we go, my friends. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Well, it's not looking too bad for the first slice, but it's going to look a lot better as it cools a little bit. Uh, but it is, um, hey, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Let me get a fork and test this guy. And I don't think it's too hot. I think I'd be able to handle it. Um, it looks pretty hot, but not, not too hot. <sighs> huh. mm. My friend, I love it. We can feel a little bit of the crunch on the, on the carrots and the peas. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. I love it. I hope you make it. Let's try to see what the single dude is doing over there. Let's see. Um, now, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't think I was going to be able to handle it because it's pretty hot. So let's do this. Yeah, but if I lift it, it'll come out. So, you know. Um, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, Operation Rescue. Come over here, put it right there, and uh, we're going to take this guy right there, and we're going to poop it open, and voila, we got ourselves a individual serving of a um, shepherd's pie. Fabulous, my friend. I hope you make the recipe in a lasagna pan or individual serving. Thank you for watching. It was fun to cook for you again. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again in the next few days for another fantastic show. We are back 24 hours later. I wanted to show you. Look how beautiful it looks. If you give it time to rest a little bit before you go ahead and cut it like I did at the end of the video, it looks a lot nicer. You can see the bottom, the top, and the middle. Much better. It's kind of like a lasagna. When you make a lasagna, you got to let it rest. And then it's much better when you cut it the next day or a few hours later and you reheat it slowly in a warm oven, like 250, 275, until the center is 145. And that's what, this is going to be fantastic. I hope you try it.